healing the soul of America. Now, if there's anything that we can take away from the year 2020, we can walk away without a shadow of a doubt, knowing that the soul of America is sick. Now, healing the soul of America is not an easy task, but the path to healing can clearly be understood in three easy steps. Step number one teaches us that the soul of America is sick simply because we continue to make errors in purpose. Step number two teaches us that we must embrace the inadequacies of our institutions when it comes to correcting errors in purpose. And then step number three teaches us that in this season, we must master new skills to scale our growth potential. Step number one teaches us that the soul of America is sick simply because we ignore that we're making errors in purpose, which can clearly be seen in America's prison system. We call them correctional facilities. We have to ask the question, what are we trying to correct? A few years ago, I had an opportunity to teach what I've coined as purpose development to inmates in Bradley County Correctional Facility in Cleveland, Tennessee. I will never forget my first encounter with a huge inmate that showed up to participate in my class. And as soon as the class would start, this gentleman would walk out and disappear behind a wall. Now, it wasn't his statue that shocked me as it was to his adamancy about not participating in my class. The following week, the same thing happened. Everyone would show up, and as the class started, this gentleman would walk out and disappear behind that glass wall. Now, I began to inquire among all the inmates about this dude's status, and they began to inform me that you don't want to mess with this dude because this was the gentleman that was accused of killing three people on Valentine's Day. And I said, oh, I remember his story in the news media. And I couldn't believe that they had put me in his pod. So for two weeks, I tried to forget about this guy until one week, I saw him staring through a glass window on the other side of the room. And then a few weeks later, this gentleman actually started participating in my class and became the number one student in my classroom. And upon leaving one day, the prison guard began to inform me that the violence in that particular part had been reduced to zero. And I remember thinking that purpose development could affect change beyond spiritual and personal growth circles that I traditionally knew about. But for the first time, I got an opportunity to experience and witness the power of purpose development with those inmates. So out of curiosity, I had to ask my number one student, what was the change in heart? What caused this change in heart? And he admitted that on the first day, he was actually listening to my session behind that brick wall. But he admitted it that he thought I was just another preacher slash success motivational speaker that came in to give them some hyped up message. And he said, and I quote, been there, done that, don't want to do it again. But he went on and he explained that because I broke down how we were making errors in purpose, he began to understand the errors of his ways. And not only did he participate in the class, but he became my number one advocate for helping all the other inmates understand and embrace the power of purpose development. And one day upon leaving this 20 year guard, began to approach me and he put an envelope in my hand and he explained his advocacy for 20 years of trying to get a program like this into the prison system to move the prisoner's heart to action, to soften their heart. And then I began to open up the envelope and I saw a $100 bill in the envelope and I inquired about the $100 bill and he said, sir, because of purpose development, You've made my job easier and I wanted to make sure that I could support your work. And I never forget that upon a breakthrough session one day that I had with the inmates 
and witnessing and being shocked at their liberty, I begin to think about that it's one thing to be incarcerated, but it's another thing to have an incarcerated purpose. I begin to think about the billions of people that are free, but purpose remain trapped within the soul and they continue to make errors in purpose over their lifetime. Now, step number two teaches us that at some point, we must embrace the inadequacies of our institutions when it comes to correcting the errors in purpose. Now, for 30 years, I've always wondered why America was a content-rich country, but yet at the same time, the citizens of America remain poor when it comes to bringing this content to life. We house some of the biggest churches in the world, some of the most notable thought leaders in the world, and print more Bibles and conduct more success motivation seminars than any country on the planet, but yet at the same time, we're one of the most dysfunctional countries in the entire world. Now, America only constitute about 4.5% of the world's population, but at the same time, we house 20% of the world's prison population, and we wonder that wonder why after 58 years of Dr. King giving his famous I have a dream speech, we're still asking the question, how can we heal the soul of America? Church leaders continue to boast about saving souls, but yet at the same time remain silent when it comes to repurposing the soul to add value to the world. Sure that at some point we must realize that Healing the soul of America is bigger than success motivation seminars. It's bigger than our church services. It's bigger than politics. America is known for inspiring and saving the souls, but yet at the same time, we continue to come short when it comes to correcting errors and purpose in the soul. What good is it to be known for inspiring and saving the soul and errors and purpose are continuing to be made among the people of America. Yes, we need justice reform, but at some point we must realize that if we don't correct errors in purpose, then the soul of America will continue to remain sick. Step number three teaches us that we must master new skills in this season to scale our growth potential. In fact, it shed new light on how to heal the soul of America. The country that refuses to help its citizens build a bridge to the future will always be haunted by attitudes and behaviors from the past. If we continue to remain void of the ingenuity to repurpose the soul to build that bridge to the future, then the citizens of our country will continue to make errors and purpose from the past. In an 1886 commencement speech for the Perkins School of the Blind, Helen Keller's teacher, Ann Sullivan, stated, self-culture is a benefit not only to the individual, but also to mankind. Every man who improves himself will aid in the progress of society, and everyone who stands still will hold society back. The advancement of a society has its commencement in the individual soul. Now, healing the soul of America requires insight into the reality that the very thing that we're trying to heal contains its own remedy. Sure, we know that the soul can be inspired and saved, but more importantly, the soul can harvest the energy of purpose. Now, America is known for inspiration and salvation, but when it comes to harvesting the energy of purpose, it's never a thought beyond what we do without gifts and talents. Now, 2020 exposed great disparities that, ha that America has struggled with for years. And almost overnight, we found ourselves fighting against an unseen enemy that was attacking both the body and the soul. As COVID-19 attacked the body, purpose deficit disorder attacked the soul through social injustices and politics. Healing the soul of America is like healing the body from COVID-19. As we inject shots in the arm to build immunity against the virus, we must inject the soul with purpose development to build immunity against the culture 
that infects the soul. As we vaccinate the soul with purpose development, we minimize the risk of people becoming a host for making errors in purpose from the past. Now, my goal for speaking to the inmates was bigger than inspiration and salvation. Although important, I figured that in order to prevent them from making errors in purpose from their past, they needed to be vaccinated with purpose development to correct the errors in purpose within their soul. As we contemplate healing for America, it must include helping people remove the bad ergonomics and their growth potential so that they can correct errors and purpose from their past. And as the soul becomes the vehicle for scaling growth potential, we can truly heal the soul of America.